16 new admissions today. A total of 37 new patients in two weeks. We have accommodations for six. Next case, please, Miss Lowell. Patient eligible for release, Roy Turner, file number 2811. Age 27, occupation draftsman. American citizen, single, no immediate family. Committed to the institution 18 months ago by court order following an act of extreme violence. Diagnosis, schizophrenia with regression to primitive emotionality. Patient responded favorably to treatment and was interviewed for a release on October 4th last at a staff conference held by Dr. Emmett Rayburn. Patient appeared rational, intelligent, Optimistic. Release recommended. Physical examination, October 3rd. Dr. Harold Fisher. Patient found to be in good condition. No physical impairments whatsoever. Release recommended. Oh. Recommendation of patient psychiatrist, Dr. Neil Crawford. Report of patient psychiatrist, Roy Turner, 2811. Although patient has responded well to treatment, he is still considered a disturbed personality, not yet completely cured. Release is not recommended at this time. May I ask you, doctor, when is a mental patient completely cured? Only 18 months ago, Dr. Royce, Roy Turner tried to kill a stranger in the street. He was ill then. He may still be ill. Overwork, unfair treatment on his job, and a negative family background once drove Roy Turner beyond his limit, Doctor. Ah, oh, we've brought him back. But how far? I'm not sure. When will you be sure? We're never sure. Every time we open the door in a case like this, we're taking a chance. We'll take less of a chance with Roy Turner if I can have another six months. Dr. Crawford, each patient needs so many square feet in a hospital ward, so much linen. So much food, so many hours of a doctor's time. Roy Turner has had all we can afford to give him. How many patients do you think a psychiatrist like yourself should handle here, Dr. Crawford? 50, 55, perhaps. How many are you handling? 185. Oh. Should we keep uh, Roy Turner here, doctor? and make it 186? How much will that help Turner or your other patients? Recommendation of patient psychiatrist, Roy Turner, to 811. Release is recommended. Diagnosis, normal. What are your plans, Roy? Well, I'm going to get a job as soon as I can. I'm going to Los Angeles. They, they need draftsmen there in the aircraft factories. I know I can find something. Sure you will. You've got a lot of talent. Roy, if a deep sea diver comes up all at once, he gets the bends. To prevent that, they pop him into a decompression chamber for a while so that the return to what he was used to was gradual. Now, you may need the same treatment. The pressure is different out there. There's emotional stress and strain, lots of it. It can twist you until you snap, Roy. It happened once, can happen again. 
Watch your step, huh? All aboard. Start off slowly, Roy. Don't let tension mount in you. When you feel trouble coming, back off. You won't be a coward. You know that now. All aboard. Remember, no stress, no strength. Make it your slogan, OK? Will you drop me a line, a postcard? So long, Roy. Thanks, Doc. Thanks for everything. Would you like to fill out a card? Your name, please. Just be seated. We'll call you. Mr. Reynolds, you're next. Yes, it is. Thank you. I just came into Los Angeles today. I see. Where were you last employed, Mr. Turner? The International Design Corporation. How long ago was that? It was two years ago. And your reason for leaving? Reason for leave. Hey, look out, you crazy fool! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Please stop it! You all right, honey? I'm all right now. I think I must be off his rock. Watch your step getting out, please. Where? Inside, first door to your left. Thanks.
Beats the smog, doesn't it? Does the weather stay like this pretty much? Every day during the winter. No rain, no fog, no smog. Also, no people. Mm. Hey, would you mind handing me that wrench on the fender? Sure. Thanks. Going all the way up the coast? I'm not sure. I thought maybe I'd find a little place around here with some sunshine. Been sick? Yes, I... A lot of folks head out this way when they're looking for a rest. What hit you, one of those virus bugs? I said, what hit... Hey. Hey, you all right? You're white as a sheep, boy. You want some water? No, it's... It's all right. I... I, I haven't been feeling so well. Lunch! It's our first. Watch out for the questions. <laughs> We're fresh out of breast of pheasant, sir, so you get a melted cheese sandwich. Hello. Hi. Are you a father? No. Too bad. You're nice looking. Down, girl. See? She's eating for three. I can't help it. I'll get you another one. I'm starved. Always. Goodbye. Goodbye. OK, let's go, folks. Is there a nice place to stay around here? Well, there's a motel about a quarter of a mile up the road. The seaside cottages. Are you thinking of doing your resting here? Well, that's an idea. Oh, thanks. Thanks for everything. I, I enjoyed talking to you. Goodbye. So long. staring at? Hmm? Nothing. What happened? Did your car break down? No. Where are you heading? Going that way. Going far? Is, is there any law against it if I am? No, not if you're not hitchhiking. Now, may I see some identification, please? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Goodbye. Have you got a vacancy? 
Where'd you park your car? Well, I don't have a car. I came in the bus. Six dollars a day, thirty-five dollars a week. Pay in advance. Okay. Okay what? Okay for a week. All right. Sign up inside. Can you sign this, please? This your first visit to this part of the country? No, I was here once before on a job. A uh, salesman, Mr. Turner? No. <laughs> sort of a game with me, guessing people's occupation. Uh, mechanic? Uh, office worker. How many guesses do you get in your game? <laughs> It'll be 35 out of 40. Susan, number three ready? Just needs towels. I'll get them. I'm a draftsman. Susan! Coming, coming. You need towels again. I found three with holes the size of a cantaloupe before I got to these. Oh, hello. How do you do? Mr. Turner. May I present Miss Susan Mays? My daughter. How do you do, Mr. Turner? May I show you to your cottage? I, uh... I was staring. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, oh, don't mind Dad. Mother always used to say he was a grumbler in the off-season. Oh, we'll get along all right. Hello, Miss Susan. Hello, Vernon. Oh, Vernon's the handyman. Just whistle for him if, if anything won't open, close, go on or off, or stop or start. Well, that is a handyman. Huh. Boy, I'm glad I stopped here. I didn't even know I was going to until... until about a minute before the bus pulled out. You're impulsive. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I once got off a ship in Havana after the gangplank was up because I couldn't stand the color of the smokestacks. If I ever got on a ship, Mr. Turner, that was going in or, or out of Havana or any place else, I wouldn't get off if the smokestacks were painted like peppermint sticks. A little tired of the same scenery, huh? No, a little anxious to see more. Well, you can get anxious in Hawaii or Havana or Rio. One place is just like the next? No, places are the way they make you feel. See, I'm, I'm here right now because the fellow who runs the garage next to the bus stop was nice to me and his wife. Oh, oh, Amy. Honestly, Amy acts as though she invented pregnancy. Yeah, I know. We hadn't even met, and she wanted to know if I was a father. Are you? No, I'm not even spoken for. Oh. This is a little smaller than the other cottages, but it has the best view of the ocean. It's warm enough to sunbathe in the middle of the day. How's the water? Oh, freezing. Oh, uh, thanks for showing me to my room. Oh, you're welcome. I heard you say you were going to be with us for a week. Well, maybe a little longer. I, uh, I'm resting up. Oh. Well, if you need anything, there's always someone in the office. Goodbye. Bye.
the sand is softer. <laughs> am, I, am I disturbing you? Uh-uh. I don't allow myself to be temperamental. I'm not good enough yet. Well, do you mind if I take a look? Help yourself. Very good. Not really. I'm having an awful lot of trouble with my sky. The blue won't come alive. Well, what are you using? Ultramarine and cobalt. I think uh, a little Prussian blue might help. Oh, do you paint? <laughs> no, no, I don't paint, but I used to. I, I couldn't get the sun, the sky, or the sea to come alive. Oh. <laughs> that is good. I hope so. I want to win it in the fall show in Santa Barbara. I didn't even get by the preliminary judging last year, the year before, for that matter. You really stay with something, don't you? Oh, I'd keep painting even if there wasn't a show. Well, that's enough for a while. Well, don't stop because of me. I need a rest, unless you'd rather be alone. Oh, no. Would you like a cigarette? Uh-huh. It's nice here, isn't it? It's my favorite spot. I used to do my daydreaming here when I was a little girl. I was Florence Nightingale laying cool hands on fevered brows. Dirty little hands, I'm afraid. What did you daydream about? I didn't. I was too busy with my hobby. Oh? What was that? Well, my father had a store near the Atlantic Ocean, and I... <laughs> I kept birds on the roof. What kind? Seagulls, cranes, sandpipers. Of course, I couldn't keep the big birds captive, but they came around in time for dinner, all right. <laughs> there, there was one in particular. He was a seagull with a big black spot on his throat. I used to call him Bullseye. He was magnificent in flight. Poetic. Uh, I, I fed him every day for two years. Why did you stop? Why did you stop? Because the mean old man shot him for sport. How terrible. Yes. And I couldn't do anything about it. I was just a boy. But what about your father? Couldn't he do something? My father was the mean old man. <laughs> Bullseye was bigger. Shipped out on a freighter as a cabin boy a few days after that. I, I ran away from home. Did you ever go back home? No. No home ended while I was away. My, my, my parents were killed in a car accident. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. Look, I, I'd rather hear about the life of Susan Mays. Ask me ten years from now. I would like to. You know, I, I think the, um, the Prussian blue will give you just the color you want. Anybody home? Be right with you. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, well, thanks. No complaints, I hope. Oh, no. 
That's very cute. Thank you. I was just wondering if you could tell me a good place to eat within walking distance. Well, the cafe at the bus stop's the only place within walking distance. Thanks. But my coffee's a lot better than you'll get at the cafe. Besides, Dad had to go into L.A. at the last minute, so there's a good dinner waiting. Well, how's the service? With a smile. Invitation accepted. Sure. Come on. Oh, I... I wonder if I could send one of these. I, I promised a friend I'd keep in touch. Please. They're all the motel, though. That's why they're free. I'll get things going. everybody. In here, Ed. Hi, baby. Oh, Ed, put me down. Ed, this is Roy Turner. Ed Wallace, Roy. Hello, Turner. How do you do? We met earlier on the road. Yes, the, uh, the officer considered me a suspicious character. Oh. Anybody want anything? No, thanks. We're just about to have dinner. Oh, is your father around, Susan? No, he went into L.A. Uh, stand here, Turner? Yes. Want to be around long? I don't know. Why don't you sit down? No, not me. I sit all day. Right? Sure. Where are you from, Turner? Uh, the East. Well, whereabouts? On the Atlantic coast. North or south? You're asking an awful lot of questions, Ed. Cigarette? Oh, oh, no thanks. I'll have one. Oh, sorry. You looking for work? There's a shortage in the factories up north if you're interested. All sorts of skilled labor. Any specialty? Well, what kind of work do you do? Sorry, it, it fell right out of my hand. Thanks for the beer. Tell your father I said hello. See you later, Turner. smashed it. Why did you smash it? Well, I haven't been feeling very well lately, and uh, I've been kind of jumpy, and I, I guess I just haven't got it with yet. I used to wait on old master and give him his plate and pass the bottle when he got dry and right away the blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Old master's gone away. Amy. <laughs> and when he'd ride in the afternoon. I'd follow after with a hickory broom. The oh, pony no. being rather shy. <laughs> oh, no. A oh, poor child. Imagine what Rockabye Baby's gonna sound like to him. It'll sound soothing. Rockabye Baby on the treetop. <laughs> when the 
Wind blows? No, thanks. <laughs> Very well. To overcome my frustration, I'll eat. What did you pack, Susan? Oh, everything you'd like. Chocolate-covered spaghetti, ice cream with chopped pickles, and strawberry meatballs with pistachio gravy. Oh, cut it out. You're making me sick. It's making me hungry. Boy, what a day. And you were right about your winter weather here, Hank. Well, it sure hasn't hurt you any, Roy. Roy nearly passed out at my place a week ago. Oh, I just need a little rest. It's nice you're all year round, Roy. You thinking of staying on, Roy? Well, well I, I don't know. I, I'd have to get a job. What do you do? I'm a draftsman. Say, they're taking people on up at Martin Engineering. Maybe they need draftsmen. It's only five miles from here. It's not very far, is it? Well, let's get things ready. Can I help you? No, and you can't either, Susan. Hank and I'll get this. Go on, take a walk. Talk to nature, anything. Hank and I would like a few minutes by ourselves, you know. I couldn't live without them. I'll whistle when we're ready, Roy. OK. Susan? Thanks. You're not supposed to frown on the beach. You get a funny sunburn. Oh. What's the trouble? It's Martin Engineering. Are you really going to look for a job there? Well, I'd like to. But? It's the interview. I, I get nervous when people ask me a lot of questions. I, I know it's foolish, I am. Absolutely. Name, please. <clears throat> uh, Roy Turner. Address, Mr. Turner? Seaside Cottages. Uh, six a day, 35 a week. Age? I'm 27. I'm 22. Occupation, Mr. Turner? I'm a draftsman. Good, we need a draftsman. See how nice it's going. Where were you last employed, Mr. Turner? International Design Corporation. How long ago was that, sir? It was two years ago. And your reason for leaving, Mr. Turner? I asked you your reason for leaving, Mr. Turner. Were you ill? No. What was the trouble, Mr. Turner? A personal problem? Yes. Do you still have your personal problem, Mr. Turner? I don't think so. Oh, fine, Mr. Turner. Now, would you mind demonstrating your ability as a draftsman, sir? I'm confused, Mr. Turner. It, it looks like a carrot and two hairpins. What is it? Well, it's two hairpins and a carrot. Oh! <laughs> Come and get it. Hungry? Yes, I'm starved. Come on. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Oh, me too. I don't know which was more fun, listening to Amy at lunch at the beach or listening to Amy at the drive-in at dinner. <laughs> She's crazy. I haven't had as much fun in a long time. I don't know if I ever did. Well, I'd better let you go in now. You want to be rested for your attack on Martin Engineering.
We're going to get that job, Roy. Did you get the job? Just about. I got a call in at 5 o'clock. Someone else is being considered? Three someone else's, but I got them all licked on background, education, and experience. Oh, smart man. Feel that good? Oh, I feel better. Careful, you'll explode. <laughs> Not a chance. No stress, no strain. Hey, what about a celebration tonight, after 5 o'clock? It'll have to be a late date. <laughs> I promised Amy I'd drive her to L.A. She's going to have dinner with her folks. Hank's got to work. I'll be back by 9. I'll be waiting. Hello, Dad. Susan, I can't find anything around here anymore. Where did you put last month's bank statement? Bottom drawer underneath the checkbook. Hmm? Oh. Susan, you haven't checked the statement with the stubs. Oh, I forgot. I'll do it first thing in the morning. I'm late now, Dad. Late for what? Where are you going? I'm taking Amy into L.A. Oh. Where were you all afternoon? I drove Roy to Martin Engineering. What for? He applied for a job there. <laughs> That's a surprise. Roy is nice, Dad. All young men are nice to girls of your age. Just what do you know about him? I think I'm in love with him. Oh, Susan, you don't make sense. Well, this Turner's a stranger. No, he isn't. We've spent a lot of time together. Sure, you have a whole week. Oh, now, look, honey, people don't fall in love that fast. Who is this Turner? Where is he from? Who are his people? I don't know. And yet you say you're in love with him. I said I think I'm in love with him. Susan. Dad, I know what I'm doing. I'm not a little girl anymore. Well, then, for heaven's sake, don't behave like Dad. that. Dad. You didn't give me the money for the towels you want me to. I'll need twenty dollars. Oh, now look at that. Oh, Dad. Here's the twenty dollars. Susan. Honey, I'm... I'm sorry we argued. Me too. Oh, Susan. Uh, here. Buy Amy a cocktail. Hmm? Thanks, Dad. Bye. Goodbye, hon. Good luck, Roy. Have fun. How are you? Hi, Lauren. Swap you even. Thanks, Don. Good afternoon. Do you have a nice, quiet cottage for rent off the highway? All of our cottages are off the highway. Well, that's something. Silence is golden, you know. Yes, I know. 
Now, uh, if you'll sign right there, please. Oh, that's six dollars a night, thirty-five dollars a week. I'll just need it for one night. Thank you. Vernon! Vernon! The handyman will show you to your room. Thank you. Easy, Roy. You're gonna wear out my garage. If I get that job, I'll buy you another one. You'll get it. Amy dreamed of a swan last night. That's good luck, according to her dream book. Is that for swans or people? <laughs> hey, look, do you think that five to five is too soon? Go ahead. Maybe their clock is fast. Yeah. Speak to Mr. Rodman in the personnel department, please. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Rodman. Uh, this is Roy Turner, the fellow that spoke to you about the job today. I, I do. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Monday morning, 8 o'clock. Right, sir. Thank you. Amy, dream good, huh? Uh, perfect. Congratulations. Same to you. You're the one that put me on the job. OK, congratulations to both of us. When do we celebrate? Tonight, when the girls get back. That's 9 o'clock. Why don't we get a head start? Drinks and dinner on me. Well, I'd like to clean up before Susan gets back. Don't worry. I'll get you back at the motel and plenty of time to slick up. Close for business on account of Roy Turner. Are you sure you two aren't going to want to celebrate privately? What, spoil a party for Amy? Not a chance. See you in about an hour. I'm with you. Mr. Mays, I locked myself out. Could I have a pass key? That's $17.50 rebate, Mr. Turner, for the half a week left in your room. You, you want me to leave? The sooner the better. But why? You know, I've never trusted you since the day you got here, Turner. No car, no job, no nothing. But that didn't matter till you took up with Susan. But who and what you were and where you came from became important. What do you know about me? Everything. Let me set you straight. I didn't raise Susan for 22 years to have her snatched up by some shiftless no account. I have a job. On false pretenses. Or does the Martin Engineering Company know that you're sick? Does Susan know? I'm not sick. I'm better. They said I was better. For how long? No thanks, Turner. 
I don't want you around here. Now, uh, why don't you just clear out and avoid the embarrassment of explaining to Susan and to the Martin Engineering Company that there's nothing really wrong with a, a lunatic. Take your stuff. Get out. That's the end of the line. Sheriff, you got a prisoner in there and we want him. Not while I'm the law. Hold it, boys. Close those shutters there. I'm going to let you loose, Lord, so you can help us fight him off. But you're still under arrest. Uh, we haven't got any vacancies. At this time of year? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's the plumbing. We have no hot water. Oh, that's too bad. Come on, Stanley. Let's try the next place. Good night. Good night.
in here. Oh, in there. On the floor. Dead. Operator, give me the police. And after you screamed, Miss Dodge, you ran out on the porch, is that correct? Yes. I saw him outside and I called to him. What brought you out of your cottage, Mr. Turner? Miss Dodge screamed? Well, that's right, yes. What were you doing at the time? Well, I was shaving. I see. Did you hear anything unusual earlier? A disturbance of any sort? Uh, no. No. Did you hear a car pull up or leave? Not that I remember. I did. I heard a car leave. When was that? Well, I don't remember the exact time, but it was a little while before... I came up here. About how long before? Five or ten minutes? Yes, something like that. Did you hear the car? Hmm. No, I don't think so. How about you? I, I was at the cafe. That's right, I checked. Where can you be reached, Miss Dodd, in case we need you later? I live in Sacramento, 2800 Barnett Place. Mr. Turner? Well, I'm, I'm living here right now. Oh, are you employed around here? Well, starting Monday at Martin Engineering. I see. Thank you, Mr. Turner. That's all. Susan is going to stay with us for a few days, Roy. I'll drop around and see you tomorrow. I'd better be by myself a few days. Thanks. Excuse me. You finished your prints yet, McDermott? All through, Captain. I couldn't do better myself, Mr. Turner. You're just about a professional gardener now. Yeah, with blisters and everything. <laughs> oh, Vernon, you want to get that topsoil now? Sure thing. Hello, Turner. 
I am. Susan around? No, she's still over with Amy and Hank. How is she? Well, Amy says she's feeling better. You know, it's a funny thing, Turner. In a case like this, we ought to have some lead by now. A string of similar robberies. Some of the stolen stuff, like the jewelry that was taken and shows up in a pawn shop. Something like that. But we haven't hit on a single thing yet that we can tie on to. Uh, you didn't see anybody hanging around here a couple of days before the murder, did you? No, I, I think I told you that. Yeah, I know, but uh, sometimes people remember things later on. You didn't see Mr. Mays talking to any strangers uh, a day or two before? Uh, no. That was just a thought. How do you like your new job? Oh, it's fine. Draftsman, aren't you? Yeah. Must be interesting work. Well, tell Susan I was asking for, will you? Sure. So long, Turner. So long. Thanks, Ed, but everything's being taken care of. Turner? Mm, he's been wonderful. Well, we'll see you later. Bye, Ed. Welcome home. Hello. What happened to your car? Nothing, but I thought something would happen to my legs if I didn't start using them. Hey, you haven't been idle. Oh, me and Vernon. I draw the plans, he does the heavy works. After drawing plans all day, that's not much of a change. I missed you, Susan. I missed you. Uh, how's everything at Martin Engineering? Well, I think it's going to be Martin and Turner Engineering pretty soon. Then Turner and Martin, I suppose. Yes, I think I'll keep them on. <laughs> Amy says she misses you. She'd like us to go out to dinner with them tonight. Well, do you want to go out? Mm-hmm. All right, you got a date. <laughs> oh, I'm stuffed. I'm starved. Well, sure, you forgot to eat before dinner. <laughs> Will there be anything else? Oh, yes, I'd like okay, to. Uh, uh, just the check, please. And it's on me tonight. <laughs> but I brought oh, Amy. <laughs> no, it's, I'm a very rich man today. Mm -hmm. You'll be asking for a raise on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Roy. Hmm? Where did you get this, Roy, this $5 bill? Well, I don't know why. Stain, it looks like nail polish on it. So? I spilled nail polish in the cash drawer the morning Dad was killed. It made a splotch on the top bill, like this one. It was a $5 bill. You, you think that's the same bill? Susan, lots of people have spilled nail polish on money. I did it once. I think I'll keep this, Roy. The police might want to check and see if it is my nail polish on it. Well, how could it be? It's a thousand to one. It isn't the same bill, Susan. Susan, remember what we said this morning, how everything keeps reminding you of what happened. Maybe you should sell the motel, Susan, soon. Thank you, sir. Well, folks, where do we go from here? Dinner? <laughs> How about a ride up the coast in a nightcap someplace? Ladies? Fine. I'm with you. <laughs> oh, uh, Hank, uh, why don't you get the car? I I'll meet you out front. Right on. Your change, sir. You can take my word for it, Miss Mays. We'll get you better than the market price, and in a hurry. I hope so. I know so. 
I'll come by first thing in the morning and pick up the inventory. Goodbye, Miss Mays, and thanks for the listing. Goodbye, Mr. Rogers. Goodbye, Mr. Turner. Goodbye. The real estate man sounds optimistic. Well, it's an occupational disease. You sound pessimistic. That is also an occupational disease. We linen counters are a very solemn lot. <laughs> you fine day of rest you've had. It's the nicest Sunday I ever spent. You linen counters are also a romantic lot. Where were we? Uh, sheets, bed, single. Eight, twelve, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen checks. Sheets, bed, double. Stationary boxes of? Eight. Eight checks. Desk pen set? Desk pen set. One and only. One and only checks. Holder and the registration card. Also one and only. What's the matter? This registration card. It's dated October the 26th. The day Dad was killed. Well, that was the last day the motel was open for business, Susan. I know, that's not what I mean. Look, someone started to register and then stopped. So? Well, don't you see that this someone, this Mr. and Mrs., were here at the motel the day of the murder? You think these people uh, are the ones that killed your father? It's possible. Or maybe they saw something the police ought to know about. Well, well how can we get in touch with these people? It might not be so hard. If for some reason or other they, they changed their minds about staying here, if they weren't the murderers, they'd stop at the next motel along the way, wouldn't they? That's right. The police can check the motels up and down the highway, see if a couple registered on, on the 26th. Well, there must have been hundreds of couples registered that night. Not this time of year. Besides, we have a piece of handwriting for comparison. But it's, it's just two words. That could be enough. What are you doing with that? I'm going to take it to Ed Wallace tomorrow, or maybe tonight. That's a good idea. Mr. Turner? Yes, what is it, Vernon? Could I see you out here, please? Well, I'm very busy right now, Vernon. Miss Susan and I are busy. But it'll only take a minute, Mr. Turner. It's important. All right, I'll be right out. I guess I'd better go speak to him, huh? What is it, Vernon? I found this. It's Mr. Mays' watch, one of the things the murderer took. It was buried out back. I didn't want to upset Miss Susan. When did you find it? Just now. I went back to get my shovel. We dug up some weeds out there today, and I saw something shining in the moonlight. Should we call the police, Mr. Turner? No. Uh, you better give me a chance to break it to Miss Susan. You better go back to your room, Vernon. I'll speak to you later. Something wrong? Everything's all right. Yes, everything's all right, Miss Susan. What was it? Oh, it wasn't anything. He... Just wanted a few dollars. Oh. Back to work? I'm afraid I'd only make mistakes. Too much moon? Too much Susan. The beach must be wonderful tonight. Can we take 10? <laughs> You'll stretch it to 20. I know. Do you remember the first time we were on this beach together, Susan? Of course. On the other side of these rocks, I was painting. We talked about daydreams. I said I didn't daydream. That wasn't the truth. I was daydreaming even then. Even while we talked about it. About what?
a life together with you. I fell in love with you that day, Susan. We had just met, Roy. But you fell in love too, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Now, if only your father hadn't interfered. What made you say that, Roy? Well, he never really gave us a chance. Why did he hate me, Susan? He didn't hate you, Roy. Oh, he did. And I loved you, Susan. Roy. Hmm? Why did you say that about my father? Well, he didn't like me from the beginning. And when he found out where I came from, he wasn't going to let me have anything to do with you. Where you came from? Susan. S Susan. You can't show that registration card to Ed tomorrow. Why not? Why can't I show Ed the registration card? Well, things could have been all right here, Susan. Your father didn't have to interfere. Roy, why can't I show Ed the registration card? You, you could have been happy here, Susan. You could have painted on the beach when I was working, when I came home at night. You'd kiss me hello. Why did you say that about my father? We would have nice friends. Vernon would work for us. We'd go out sometimes with Amy and Hank. You don't make sense. But I did. Dr. Crawford said I made sense. That's why they let me go. But Dr. Crawford said I had to be careful. He said I should back away from trouble, and I did. But I couldn't back away from your father, Susan. He wouldn't let me. Your father had no right to open that letter. Everything was going fine until then. Everybody liked me. But he found out about me. He called me a lunatic. And he was going to tell you and the Martin Engineering people and everybody. And I couldn't allow it. So I had to kill him, Susan. Because I loved you. I I have to kill you now for the same reason. Because you know what no. I did. No, Roy, no! Ah!
Operator, give me the police. Please? Let me have Sergeant Wallace. Wallace? This is Roy Turner. I killed Lauren Mays. Please, come and get me quickly. <laughs> <laughs> 